stopped needing me when she came along. Oh, how strange, strange you changed like night and day, just up and walked away when she came along. From Atlanta, where our underground is 98% tentacle free. It's the Nine Billion Names of Pod with Dan Bauman and Michael Reed. I'm Dan Bauman. I'm the third Duffer brother. <laughs> so let's talk about some stuff. Yeah, let's do it. We're going upside down. Um, we uh, we finished up Stranger Things season two. And uh, chapter two, chapter is that what it is? Or well, no? no, I think that the, the chapters are within the episode. Yeah, I, I, I think it's season two, and part two, it's Stranger Things two. That's all it was was two, Just two. And uh, we're I expected go- the little Ghostbusters guy to pop out and yeah. go, <laughs> and we're going to spoil the shit out of it. So if you haven't watched it, stop now. Um, okay, what did you? Where to begin? Where to begin? Overall, um. It basically was the second part of season one. It tread very little new ground. I was a bit underwhelmed. Really? Enjoyed it thir- thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Don't don't get me wrong. And maybe it's just my impatience for wanting to explain the upside down. What's it, you know? And that's not what the no. That's not what my brothers are doing. Yeah, <laughs> they're not. They're not doing that. They're you know they've. Uh, I can't remember. I've read that they don't see this going beyond X number of seasons. I can't remember what yeah, number six, they probably. said. Yeah, and and that's that's the smart thing. You know, don't wear out your welcome. It's still fresh. People, you know, um, season two, series two, whatever. They're still you know, s- social media is still buzzing about this, that, and whatever. Oh yeah. So you know. No one, no one posted that. I said, "Ah, oh, man, this is worse than the original." Or I don't like the, I don't like this one. Everyone's still pretty happy. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm just saying that I was expecting a bit more explanation about the upside down to raise the stakes, like what they're up against. Although we got introduced many new dimensions, um, creatures, um, yeah. attributes. Of the upside down, especially as it relates to when it pops into our world. Right. I mean, you know, tunnel sphincters <laughs> popping God knows what into you. You know, pfft. yeah. Yeah. So we'll get back to that later because uh, I've got some thoughts about, okay. about that. A- and and yourself. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I liked it um, every bit as much, if not more. I, I see what you're saying about no new ground. And in fact, uh, they got a little tropey. Um, <laughs> with a couple of things, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. I think, I think the writing is great. I think those kids are amazing, and they're you know rapidly not becoming kids anymore. Yeah, they need to chop chop and get. They need to turn this stuff around because wasn't uh, wasn't Harry Potter looking like he was about in his early forties by the time they <laughs> wrapped up that series? Um, they it was okay. They did for the first. Oh, four or five. They did one every year. They just kept going, and then yeah. after that, they're like, "We need to like give these kids a break." Yeah. Um, I think what they're gonna do, not to jump ahead, um, I think I read a thing with the Duffer Brothers, and they said they were going to, um, maybe jump a year or two in time for the next series. Okay. To make it to catch up with to the catch kids. up with the kids growing up. They that's, said that's fine. In in all the the supplementary stuff because there was an after thing that they did for each episode on netflix you yeah. get and uh they said and i'd read it for season one they said by the end of filming or by the end of post-production um the kid who plays dustin his voice had changed so much he couldn't do any adr because yep. it didn't sound right at all yep. and uh if you want to speak of harry potter if you want to see if you want to ruin the the end of the movie for you uh for the me mo- at least the movie well Which the end of of harry po- the first harry potter movie yeah. um the beginning of it uh or in the you know the first first act he gets on he goes on the train right and that was filmed and the end of the movie also takes place at king's cross station and he looks about a 
foot shorter at the end of the movie than he does at the beginning. Oh, they shot out a sequence. <laughs> yeah, they shot it. They yeah. shot all the trains, all the King's right. Cross stuff at the same time. So I was like, that he looks like he's you know three years old. Well, he'd been through a lot. It kind of yes, it, it shrinks. It shrinks a guy. <laughs> you know, it happens. But yeah, they there is shrinkage. You are right. They do have to. Um, that was the one dicey thing about for me was uh, in in if you haven't seen it yet, you're listening to something really stupid. Um, but it, it, they hey, maybe they just like the <laughs> the dulcet tones coming out of their. Uh, their I don't iPods. have Netflix. I want these two idiots to talk about it and tell me stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, All right, here's a synopsis of each and every episode. Yeah, the flashback sequences with Eleven at the end of from the end of season one when she's walking around in the mm-hmm. woods and everything. She's a little too tall, <laughs> but you know what are you gonna yeah. do? Yeah. Now, what for you? was the scariest thing in that in in season two scariest that made you kind of maybe it didn't actually scare you because yeah. let's face it it takes a hell of a lot to scare us these days yeah, yeah, but yeah. made you go oh that's brutal or oh, you, you know some um tell me yours and i'll see um well the fact that it pretty much took place um close to christmas of 1984 uh-huh. and that means that um reagan bush had been reelected. <laughs> Yeah, there were, Reagan, landslide. there were Reagan Bush sl- signs all over the oh, place. God. <laughs> oh, God. I think that is basically what caused the upside down to creep into. Right. Forget right. the forget the Four portal. years of Reagan. Yeah, they opened it it's up. It's four years. Is it a time right? There's going to be four more. <laughs> now. Now is the time. Um, I think for me the best, my favorite episode of the whole thing was the very first one, the very first episode, because they – they really hit you hard. Um, that first scene in the arcade when uh, when Will turns around and he's in the upside down and then yeah. you see the big spider monster. Um, that was that was like holy shit. And then at the end of the episode, yeah, I know he's called he prefers to be called the Mind Flayer. The Mind Flayer, yeah, which is a total D and D. I remember those from the, the old Monster Man. So I was like, man, how did the Duffer Brothers get the rights to that stuff? Um, but the mind player is, yeah. is Cthulhu anyway, that the, I was explaining this to Courtney while we were watching. Um, I said back in the day when D and D was first created, let's just say Gary Gygax was kind of liberal with lifting things ah. for his creatures. Um, so much so that there are, there are, um, rare copies of the first monster manual, I believe yeah. monster manual. Um, that had a character named Elric in it, and his all the stats for him and his sword. And the uh, the author of the Elric books, Michael Moorcock, said, "No, mm-hmm. I didn't give you permission to use that." So it was it was extracted. So there, if you ah. can find it's it's written. No one cares, and it's not worth money. But it's kind of. Oh, cool. I'm sure it is for people that you know. Oh my God, it's the first pressing with Elric. Yeah, because the Elric okay. books are really cool. I read. I think I read them all, and uh, it's a really good iconic character, and it was just hijacked. So a lot of the, mm-hmm. a lot of the, uh, you know, well, D and D, most of the the stuff was lifted from Tolkien. I mean, it, you know, orcs and 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 no. it, it was all and just George re-named. Lucas pulled from a, yeah, of course, you know, Kurosawa films and movie right. serials, and and for the most part, Gary Gygax was pretty. Uh, he was pretty discreet about it, like he, like the mind flayer, you know, like it was a a, a tentacle, a, a creature with a tentacled face that made you crazy. It's like, oh, you mean Cthulhu, yeah. you know, and and but at least, like I said, he was a little more discreet about it, and it made sense. It made it it made it work. So stopping on the the uh, when we got to that point in in the in episode, it was like six or seven when they got to the mind flayer, seven I mean, about I think, eight, seven or eight. Um, I, Courtney's like, what the hell does that mean? I was like, okay, let me explain. <laughs> so, but I really, got... hey, there's nothing more fun than having to stop watching and breaking the <laughs> breaking the tension of the episode to explain things to your at the moment, watching partner. At, at that time, it was a good. There was a good point because they yeah. were in the middle of exposition anyway. So I was like, all right, let yeah, me just okay. let me just. Uh, you mean I the saw... writing? Yes. They're in the middle of the writing part. <laughs> no, the exposition part where we're gonna stop doing things and tell you what's happening. The writing. The writing. Mean. Yes. Yeah. And the, the dialogue. And. It, it was a good it was a good point because um uh well getting back i really did enjoy the 
the the big spider monster, the big mind flare. I thought that was a very cool, intense way to up it. I don't know how you up it for season three. Well, the mind flare slash a shadow monster uh, now is aware of not only the kids but also of Eleven. Yeah, because she done fucked his shit up yeah. at least a tentacle of his. Yep. At the end, which we'll get to. We'll get to. And we'll get to. he's none too pleased about it. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk about that last okay. that last okay. scene. Um, what was your uh, opinion of um, of the gremlin? I'm sorry, D'Artagnan. <laughs> I, I, I was literally expecting him to like, here, you want some nougat? I'll hold it. Nope. It's 1230. Nope. No nougat for you. Was gremlins out at that point? Yes. Okay. Or if not, Gremlins 2 certainly was. Oh, okay. So, yeah. okay. Um, yes, they absolutely... Well, I mean, that's what it was. They definitely lifted... And I enjoy... I en That's what I like about the series, was I remember watching the first episode of the first series, or season, I should say, and they were playing D&D, &D, and behind them on the wall was a poster of The Thing, John Carpenter's right. Thing. And I was like... That's what this is. Okay, I get it. This is the Goonies in a in a John Carpenter movie. Oh, it's definitely the Goonies. Well, yes, yes. We'll get to that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll I was about to say it's it. like hardcore Goonies. It's so much so that there is a a I Goonie. Mean, there's a Goonie. There's and, a Goonie and a Goonie uh, reference in yes. the thing. Oh, you yes. you picked that up? Oh, I you? totally did. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, and was it good enough? Yeah. 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 Deep well, deep I'll, cuts. I'll stop. Um. Um. And. Yeah, I, I enjoy the fact that they – what's the word? They they homage a lot of – They soak things. us in the 80s without going, hey, look, here's the 80s, and there's the 80s. Look over there. Oh, there's yeah. some 80s stuff. I just mean story-wise, you know, using using D'Artagnan, like having a Gremlins kind of story. Thing. Kind now, of. now, do you think that this is the same slug that came out of um, – Will uh, of Will at the end of uh, season one. I don't know. It could be. I gotta I say, don't... probably because where else would it have come from? Right now, where have we also seen a slug? Do you remember? Um, where have we also seen a slug? I mean, in the Upside Down. In the but... Upside Down. Yeah, but only once in the Upside Down. Right, coming out of Barb's mouth. mouth. Yeah. So that makes sense. So again. A lot of homages to aliens and yes. alien yep. in, in this entire series, yep. especially in Will season was two. actually like trussed up um, when it got caught by the by uh, the Demogorgon in uh, season one, just like Tom Skerritt did in Alien. Right. Um, so I guess we can spoil it now. Which or uh, yeah, Barb is dead. Just oh, yes. dead. Yeah. There's no, you know, but there has been. Well, they did at least. OK, the big thing when season one came and went by the end of it, everyone was like, but what about Barb? You know, where everyone's we showed you what Barb is dead. Bar but I mean, the whole town for whatever it is, three weeks is looking for Will Byers. Barb also disappears and no one yeah. cares. And that was And the that's whole... why Justin for Barking is like, yeah. excuse me, the little boy, yes, that's tragic and let's find him. Yes, but the teenage... There's a girl missing too. Yeah. At least you know if not more. Now the fact that she, you know, she's a teenager that looks like she's in her late thirties, <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. She's still a human being, damn it. Right. And um at least they addressed it in this episode. In they this did season. and I think that perhaps that would not have happened. If there hadn't been such a, you know, justice for Barb thing. Right. Because it almost seemed like, you know, all right, Barb's dead and we're just going to move yeah, on. Yeah, they went on. They used the horror movie trope of the, you know, the first girl right. dying. And they they probably they probably didn't think much of it. I mean, yeah. it's not like in Jaws, which is referenced also yep. in the posters and stuff. Oh, my gosh. This girl went swimming and now she's gone. What happened to yeah, her? Who let's, is let's, she? Let's no name. Search for her. And like, no, she got chomped. And that's the end. Yeah, of she it. That's the opening of Jaws. And now she's dead. And yep. then we're not going to ever talk about her ever again. Right. Now, the thing that I found interesting and keep in mind, we're going to jump all throughout. Episode, all the, place, all the yeah. episodes, so we're not going to go linear at all. Um, at the end, mm -hmm. you know, or towards the end, we had um, uh, a lot of barbless area. 
you know, not a lot of talking about Barb. At the beginning, we had the parents that are right. selling their home. They're going to get to the bottom of this. They're they're turning their life upside down to find out what happened to their kid. They right. still have hope that maybe she's alive. Some, you know, and that's completely understandable. Completely understandable. Yeah. At the end, Hawkins Labs cops to having killed her because she was exposed to some. She was asphyxiated some kind of a. Some chemical. Some bullshit story. Okay. All right. That's good. They left out one important thing. What? Does the chemical vaporize her fucking body? Right. If they know she died from it, then where's the body? Right. No one's asking where the body is because we know where the body is. Yeah. It's technically in Hawkins. It's just kind of hanging upside down. Yeah. On the other, in the other dimension. Exactly. Of so I'm thinking, no, it's not, uh, that's, that doesn't ring true to me. Right. Or, or that seems to be a glaring mistake. Now, is that something that they did on purpose to set up something for season three? Maybe. I think, no, I think they just <sighs> used it. I, I think they use that through line. Like to uh, to quell the fans, the justice for Barb, and the they use it as a as a, a point of tension between um, Steve and uh, what's her name, the sister, and um, so I I don't think though I I think that's done, and I think bur- you know burying a casket, an empty casket, you know they made up some bullshit story about her body, I'm sure. And I, I would have liked to have had one or two lines that closed that glaring. Yeah, it's a bit of a plot glaring hole. problem because if the parents are, you know, the parents are not just, you know, oh, oh, she's dead. OK, thanks for the information. No, where's her body? Let's yeah. put her to rest. What actually know? happened to her body? Exactly. Yeah. I, we, I get it. I get it. And they don't do that now. Obviously, they only had, you know, a certain amount of time to. You right. Know, they could have trimmed about 10 minutes out of certain episodes of running through the tunnels. But OK. <laughs> all right. All right. OK. We, we had to get our, our tunnel sphincter in at least yeah, twice, yeah. <laughs> which let's talk about our tunnel sphincter, shall we? OK. All right. Um, Hopper. He breathed it in. Yep. Um, Dustin he breathed also it breathed it in. Yep. Now, are they setting something up for, Maybe. you know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because it it. it debilitated him enough hopper to where he kind of uh, and the vines got him yep and held him they weren't they were they weren't crushing him they weren't pulling him somewhere they were just holding him yep. holding him like you know we it's been established um in the in the in season two that there's a hive mind in in effect here yes the for lack of a better term, the mind flayer seems to be the queen, the controller. Yeah. The demodogs. Stop trying to make it happen, <laughs> Dustin. That was funny. I, I gotta admit that. It just, he kept working like, come on, dude. Just, and he was and he was just that's he was adamant. Mean. Well, it, not he even just, that, he was just so matter of fact about it. It was just like they would say, you know, and then the monsters, demodogs. And he would just correct them as if, you know Well, let's let let's let's talk about that for a hot second. <laughs> I think he's right. Yeah. I mean, it's got the face of a Demogorgon, but it's not upright. Right. So, right. And who's to say oh, that on the underside, there's not humanoids, there's not dogs, there's not well, slugs, who's, there's who's, not whatever. Well, also, and who's not to say that it would shed its skin again and be upright? And it's entirely possible yeah, that maybe it could, that's the next evolution. Exactly. It. it takes a while to get there. Exactly. So maybe evolutionary time on the upside down is a lot faster. And well, maybe it is. if we had gone to another couple of episodes, it would have been an upright Demogorgon. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you're really fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we got Hopper being held down by the vines after being um, yep. after being uh, sprayed in the face with the sphincter. Yeah. And uh, in the last I think it was the very, last, yeah, the very episode, last episode, Dustin got a face full of that stuff. Yeah. Now. I'm wondering if what comes out of those sphincters aren't like seeds, uh, very much like um, a face hugger in Aliens. Yeah, that's life. Maybe that's what happened to Will on the other side. Uh, and that's how the one of those got, got in there, yeah. and that it becomes a slug. Yeah, and if you, God forbid, if you inhale like thirty of those things, you've got thirty little slugs. Now, hey. now, my my question was, the things that it sprayed out are those the things that are floating in the air all over the place? Yeah, see that I, I'm wondering if that is if that's like a defense mechanism or if it's a 
evolutionary or biological reproduction mechanism. Right. Every time, you know, it's it's just floating around looking for a host. Yeah, and it's maybe kind that's of, just what it how how air, it reproduces. Yeah, and that's how the air got that way. That's why that stuff is in the air all the time. It's because it's possible. Things. It's also possible that that is a visual indication to people that oh, completely. you're in the upside down and yeah. also it adds a layer of creepy as fuck. To yeah, it. it's amazing. It's an amazing um uh, production design element. I'm I'm wondering if it's it's got to be digital because it's so I never could figure it, out. It's so light and airy. Anybody exhaling in those tunnels or in the upside down would move them around for, and you don't see that. They seem to be independently yeah. operating. But it's damn good because it looks oh, yeah. really no, no. Really whoever tight. whoever came up with that. Yeah. And executed it visually. Yep. Um, well, well done. Yes. So, um, let's talk about Carter Burke. I, I mean, I'm sorry, Doctor Owens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he just can't stop fucking with the xenomorphs no, and stuff, can no. he? And and he can't uh, can't stop playing both sides and kind of being okay. Um, I thought it was amazing to have him in there. Yeah. Considering, you know, evidently the Duffer brothers are huge alien and aliens fans, obviously. Uh, they'd have to be. Yeah. And obviously. why not? It's probably okay. We won't yeah, yeah. go into that. <laughs> My love of aliens is well known. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, Here's here's my thing about him. Okay, we he's kind of helping and kind of like running interference for Hawkins Labs with with Will. And I like the fact the thing that I like about the storyline is that um, they it didn't all just go away like. The town knows what happened, kind of. They know that he did. What are you talking about at the end? No, I'm talking about with, with at the end of season one. Okay. Like, the events of season one, like, they're dealing with them. At least not not so much the town, but, but Joyce and Hopper and everybody. They're like, yeah, we went to another dimension, and we have to help this. But and... obviously, they're not talking about it to other people. Not so much, no. Yeah, because... They would have, you know, if they had done that, there would have been a kind of. Now there wasn't a lot of uh, townspeople in this. It was kept kind of to the, to the core, to the core group, and then their immediate family. We finally got to meet um, Mike's parents. They exist. They exist. You know, that's not, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a little sister that we didn't know about. A uh, real brat. Oh yeah. But then again, that's what little sisters do. Exactly. That's you know, what an eight-year-old kid. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Playing with He-Man and uh, <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah. Um, my thing, okay, jumping around um, with Paul Reiser. First of all, like I said, great, great casting. Yeah. Because um, you kind of, he kind of seemed shitty through the whole thing. And then he kind of comes around to like help them out. I don't, I still don't trust him. No, absolutely not. And I think um, his, well, okay, again, spoilers. At the end, in the last episode, yeah, he's found yes. in in Keep the going. stairwell, and he's t and oh oh he's hurt oh he's a everybody he, else got ate by the demagogues. Yeah. He got a chomp on the leg, chomp on the leg, and a then he's couple okay. scratches, and he's okay. How did you? Okay, a bunch of fucking military dudes with with assault rifles were taken out. We're taken like out that. like that. How did you, scientist boy, make it uh, make it so okay? That is exactly what I was going to bring up. Yeah. Because that tells me that either it was self-inflicted or he is somehow There's more infected to him. and a part of the underside. I didn't even think about that. Uh, you know... He's he's definitely in control of some shit. There, there's something more to that. Yeah, he's in there studying it every day. Right. So, and so I'm wondering... Well, I don't Maybe he's he, trying. I don't, to I don't think it. he ever went over to the other side. He did. He, he always sent other people right. through. But he was. But he was there, monitoring and studying right. and running tests on the gate and everything. And yeah, he knows more than he's letting on. Obviously, I'm I'm keenly uh, looking forward to the casting announcements or just the updates to the IMDb to see if he's going to be in three. I, I hope he is because oh, this I is assume. probably the most popular thing that he has done in a decade oh or so. yeah 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 you know absolutely and i would think so yeah i think they may have said look you're going to be a key part of this you're going to be you know kind of the new big bad and you know we don't know that matthew modine is gone that's that's another thing i was going to bring up you know they alluded to it in 
you know, I think um, uh, Kaya yeah. was um, um, using that as a way to get the anger out of L. Yeah. But it brings up a question. No, he might be alive. And then well, when he... they go when they go to kill oh, yeah, the yeah. orderly yeah. that gave her electroshock, he, he said, I'll, over. I'll take I'll take you to, to Brenner. Is it Brenner? Brenner, Brenner. Yeah. yeah, I'll take you to Brenner. Like mm-hmm. he's dead. No, no, he's no, not. He's alive. He's, he's alive. Uh... And we never saw him die. We didn't. So classic, you know, monster movie um yeah, if you don't see someone die, same if you don't thing. See in, a body. Same thing as in soap opera. You know, when Stefano De Mero, quote unquote, dies, you know he's coming back in two years. Yeah, and if course. you don't, yeah, if you don't see the head come off and the dead body, exactly, but... you'd literally need to see decapitation, right? To go, all right, that character is definitely dead. Right. That's why people were still hoping, keeping hope for Barb, because they thought, like, well, maybe that's just like. A mirror image of her all decomposing in the up. There's a chance, yeah. like, because they've been done. That's been done to them so many times. Oh they've yeah, been, they've been like, look, this character's dead, and then suddenly, boom, they're not. Well, it's like uh, it's like um, Joss Whedon said um, when he made when he did Serenity, um, the Firefly movie. And if you haven't seen it, um, uh, let's just say major characters die, and he in the movie. There is a, a I won't spoil it because I think you haven't seen it. Um, for what Serenity? Have of course, you... I've seen Serenity. Oh, okay. So when when you're talking about Firefly, yes. Scene. What are you talking about? <laughs> of course, I've my my apologies, my, my apologies. Didn't I... we go and see it in the theater together? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Glad to see your memories as good as mine. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Oh um, gosh, but it's what what Joss did was um, in. The middle of the second act, he killed off uh, a shepherd book. Right. And that was like, oh, the noble death. Okay, we get it. And then he took out Wash in yeah. the middle of act three. And it was jarring because it was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And then I, I swear there was a point in the movie I, I was like, he's going to kill fucking all of them. He's going to kill everybody because he had raised the stakes. If he If they had brought Barb back and kind of cheated it, there's no stakes. Right. There's no. Exactly. There has to be a life. There has to be people dying, or right. else there's no. And, and that's why Game of Thrones has held on as being so freaking popular because they know nobody is safe. Yeah. They had a name actor be the lead guy, yeah. and they executed him halfway through season one. Yep. They're like, you can't kill him. He's the name. Oh wow. They just yeah they heads off that. the body. Holy crap. Yeah. You know? And of course, people who hadn't read the book were totally shocked as all hell. Yeah, because that doesn't happen. In, you know, your main characters right. don't. That doesn't happen. In and if they're adapting, like, well, we're going to keep this character alive. We're going to change it from the book, because that always happens. Yeah. You know, we want this. We want this popular character to keep going and going. No, dead. Yeah. Out of here. I like that. Yeah. God, I like that so Just much. Did, Just did that on um, the Angel series. Um, he. He needed he needed a one character to get abilities, okay? So he introduced this other character who had that ability, who was an amazing character, and then killed him off in episode six. And it was like jarring and infuriating, but it was great because yeah. it actually happened, you know? It's it wasn't the comic cartoon trope of oh nobody dies, everybody comes back. Right. It wasn't like uh, Brian got hit by a car, and in the next episode of Family Guy, he came back and said, "Yeah, I just did it to fuck with you." Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the fine. You know, we knew damn. I knew damn well Brian wasn't dead. Yes, there's, there's no, no possible way. It's no just possible. how he was going to come back. The people that were outraged were ones that you know, believed that they had actually done that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I mean, there's certain characters that can die. Not in Family Guy, and right. certainly not Brian. Right. Brian. Let's face it. Brian and Stewie pretty much are that show i mean yeah, peter does some crazy crap but let's face it without brian and stewie well stewie doesn't just, work without brian exactly brian doesn't work without stewie yeah but... if you lose that it's just you know peter saying shut up meg and that's yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and farting on her face which, you know <laughs> that's only good for Nothing what, wrong with two that, or but... three more seasons of that <laughs> and then the show just falls apart um yeah so speaking of uh characters dying yeah all right, let's talk. <laughs> he he was good enough. He was good enough for all of us. Yeah. Ah, uh, good old Bob. Bob. He was kind of nerdy, annoying, 
but a good guy. Like sickeningly good in a way. Yeah, solid. Like good like dude. exactly what uh, what jo- uh, Joyce? Joyce. Yeah, what Joyce needed. Yeah. Especially after being um, picked up for shoplifting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm thinking of one. <laughs> um, after the events of season one, if she didn't have some kind of an anchor outside of Will, yeah, you know, someone to you know to take care of her a little bit. I think I think she would have gone absolutely insane. She still did go a little bit. Yeah, she insane, she was a bit wacky. But you know, let's face it, she went to another freaking dimension. Yeah. to retrieve her son. I think she earns the right to have a shit ton of PTSD. Absolutely. And I, I mean, and I like the fact that they, you know, every time he was out of the room, she was jittery. Like, and where like, is he? Was where it? where or, is he? You know, you and know, like, you know wh- every time he went somewhere and she says, okay, have a good time. I'm like, how long is that going to last before you're like, why did I let him go? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and rightfully so. But um, where was her counselor? Now, obviously, I think it's stupid as fuck to have your counseling at the freaking Hawkins lab. Well, who else can you talk to about That's it? true. And it's like, so tell me what's wrong. Well, well, and at the end of the session, it's like, that's nice. Get the, you know, get the master in lunacy. Yeah, exactly. Hawkins would go, oh, we know it's real. Yeah, we know it's exactly. Because it's yeah. downstairs in our freaking <laughs> basement. We keep it in the basement. Um, I, From what I understand, Bob was kind of just a B-level character who wasn't going to make it past, like, episode two. Like, he was going to come in and come out, and they were like, oh, Sean Astin, he's fucking great. He brought something so wonderful and lovable to this guy we got to use it he's entirely untouched up to a point by the events of season one yeah he's just a happy guy yeah there's some trouble okay he went to high school with joyce and Hopper. yeah there's a history there you know and yeah he doesn't know anything about any of that stuff right uh, he knew he probably knows like everybody else that they had the funeral for Will, and it turned out he wasn't dead, right. and blah, blah, blah. And he knows that Radio Shack is going to be a solid, solid place to work forever. Forever, yeah. It'll yeah. never be a problem. Yeah, and uh, which is, it would, they said it's ironic because they said the same thing happened with Steve in season one. He was supposed to be generic bully, and that actor came in and they were like, oh, crap, he we kind of like this guy. He's supposed yeah. to be the bad guy, but... We like him, and well, we might can flip him, and it yeah. worked great. He turned out to be a great well, character. Same thing. We weren't supposed to have Jesse beyond season one in Breaking Bad, and he his dynamic with Walter White ended up being the entire the show. show. Yeah, I mean from start to finish. So yep. I like how you're able to adjust on the fly when you get a a raw talent that is just so incredible in a role you don't want to let him go and you make accommodations for that character and that actor in that role. Right. And again, like we always said with like Doctor Who with the BBC model, if you're, you know, if you're doing the whole thing and then releasing it, you can alter it in any way you want and you can work. even give your new Doctor Who Mork for Mork suspenders. <laughs> you can do it. You can do I just I I, I sorry, I hate that outfit. Why? I think it looks stupid as hell. Oh, it's going to be fun. I mean, I don't I certainly wasn't expecting her to be, you know, looking like Karen uh, Karen Gillan in in, in uh, Jumanji or anything. Like no, that, that would have been no. horrifying. But that outfit I'm God. I'm in. I'm down. I'm I mean, it. oh no, I I'm fully I'm fully yeah. down with with the new doctor. That outfit though, it's going to have to grow on me. I looked at that and went what the fuck? That like, looks like something Urkel would wear in the eighties. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we'll there'll see. be. I'm sure we'll there'll see. be talk. Yeah. Okay. I, anyway, back to, back to Bob. Back to the uh, back to the Bob. Um, um, and my favorite Bob moment of the entire um, the entire uh, second seat. Well, his his yeah. arc in the second season was as he's looking over the map that Will is drawing yep. of the tunnel system, <laughs> and he goes. Where's the treasure? Or is oh X marks the spot? Is that where the is there pirate treasure? Treasure? Yeah. And I went. You would know from pirate treasure, yep. wouldn't yep. you? Now that's like a huge Easter egg. Loved it. Loved it. Um, <sighs> my the the thing I thought. Okay, when I when I said earlier about uh getting a little tropey, mm-hmm. um, when they started writing out the the map of the the underground, you know the 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 right. vines and all that, I right. was like. Oh, that's this season's um, Christmas lights. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to do a thing in the house and uh, there's going to be a thing. And okay, I don't have a problem with it. I would just, it, I, it stuck out to me like, oh, every year there's going to be a thing. Well, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna no I'm gonna say no to that. My opinion. It it was an it was an integral plot point that needed to be done to get them to Hopper to save him. It needed it it was required to identify where the center for them to identify where the center of everything was at Hawkins Lab. Now the uh, Hopper had already identified because of the death in the fields and, and right, saw right. it at the. But it was also, you know, season one, there was Christmas lights all over our house. And in season but that was two, a communication device. This is so I, is a, it's just uh, it, it's rem, let's I, I think it's remarkably similar. Oh. But that's just my opinion. OK. Like, all, right, all, right, all right. Well, <laughs> remove it from the series and a lot of storylines fall the yeah. fuck apart. No, no, no. So it, I think it it's was, used well, but right. it's like, OK, that's and it's stylistically it made sense because they had done it. before. Right. So, um. How far, uh, how far into the uh, into the second series? I keep calling it series. The second season. Did you see the um, the uh, reunion between uh, Justin and Dart coming? Oh, um, I I knew it was going sideways. I knew it was going bad. Of course, you uh, know it just You know, I mean, it's Gremlins, like it, you said. I, as soon as as soon as I saw that thing, I went. That is going to grow up to be bad, yeah, or something along those lines. And at the end, there'll be a reunion. Now, I wasn't quite sure exactly how the reunion would happen. Turns out, it saved their freaking lives. Yes. Well, oh, at the, oh Dart, at the end, end. Dart yes. let them. Dart let them pass. Yeah, they were they they would have died in that tunnel, but yeah. Dart let them pass. Because you know, because Three Musketeers saves I, the day. I, I enjoyed that. I complete, really did. complete with vintage Three Musketeers wrapper. Yeah, they they did their research. Yeah, you know, none of that silver foil stuff. Yeah, they're pretty good about keeping keeping That's everything. Okay. And again, but again, they don't they don't beat you over the head with it. It's not right. like it's not like this is about the bad, the crazy clothes and the you know the crazy cars and crazy. It's right. just part of the. And setting. it's not like let's jam as many songs as possible in here from the period to let you know. Hey, it's the age. They definitely got clearance for a lot more songs in this of season. Of course. Well, because Netflix went, uh, we can up that budget. Yeah, to can, whatever or, you or, want. <laughs> or certain rights owner rights holders that would have just said no. Oh, I love oh, that show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. Yep. So um so yeah, I, I kind of found that to be very quickly telegraphed within minutes of him adopting him as a pet yeah I was you know like, he wasn't just gonna stay you know again tropey but it worked yeah. you know it was, it was very it, it's been done right but now there is a character that we don't know what happened to them completely is there um only we only saw this character in one episode fairly briefly but what happened to it do you are we talking about the sister? No. Okay. Yertle the turtle. Oh, yes. That's... Pulls Yertle out of the terrarium, <laughs> puts him down, and then we never see him again. I'm betting Dart ate him Did first. Did Dart ate him? Yeah. To like, you know, mm, and sucked out, the, yeah, you know, suck, sucked out the shell. Or just crunched through it yeah, and exactly. ate all of them. Yeah, So Yeah, as soon as uh, – once once the, the aquarium was broken and the, you know – you knew something bad was going on when it was getting eaten. I was like, motherfucker, it's a demogorgon. It's or, or demo dog. Come on. Well, yeah, it's I, well, I didn't something. know what a demo dog was at that point. Anytime but. you have like, um, it, it looks like a, like a, like a, um, like a funky Amazonian flower with yeah, teeth it's almost, in it. Yeah. It's almost plant. Yeah. Hybrid it, it looks kind of plant with the head, the way it is with the, uh, petal flower flap. Right. Now what I want to know is can these demo dogs really be shot or not? I ask you that because on the ingress into Hawkins by the team, uh -huh. that didn't seem to be, you know, the bullets didn't seem to be doing anything to them. They seemed to be just fine. They'd shoot at the things and they'd get eaten anyway. Now maybe I'm mistaking it because there were so many and some died and others that weren't shot maybe. got the shooters. Maybe. But at the end, 
you know, at the platform while Elle is sealing the uh, the gate, mm-hmm. Hopper's like picking them off, boom, 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 True. taking them out with one shot. Yeah. Now either this tactical team is crap, just cannot shoot for for anything, or there's an inconsistency there. My my thought on that would be, um, as she was closing the gate, maybe the connection was being broken, and, and or the you know the connection to the ah, made them more uh, weaker. more mortal. Yeah, their their Wi-Fi signal was going down. <laughs> if you think about it, pew pew pew. I'm only at three bars. Ah! Yeah, exactly. That 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 would explain it for me. Okay, all you right. Know, as can... as the portal closed and he got farther away, they were their power. Right. Connection because the hive mind connection. They they was took being their cut. power from Asgard and as Asgard is uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, wrong episode. Wrong wrong movie. Okay, I just found that uh, yeah. I just found that to be a little. But like, yeah, yeah, you're wow. right. And again, you know, Deus Ex Machina. I mean, it's got to you know some have to be able to get shot and some right. don't. And some else. just get their legs chomped. It's like thank you very much for that tasty morsel. I'm going to go back to the gate now. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Demo Dog. See yes. you later. <laughs> <Arr>! <laughs> um, let's talk about Jane. Eleven. Eleven, Jane, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we get a definite some more I mean, that was all that was all uh hinted at in the first uh, in the first season with them right. tracking down Crazy Mom. Crazy Mom, which we meet. We finally meet, yeah. We, Didn't yeah. they meet her in the first season? I believe we, we did, but no, we we meet her more um or we get to know her more fully and what it is that she is babbling on about. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, you know, four fifty rainbow to the left, yep. you know. Trump is a monster. Stop it. You know, whatever whatever she was talking about. (laughs) Right. And apparently she's got herself a little power or two. Yeah. And I think that's probably why Eleven, which I will refer to as Eleven always. So, but her name is Jane. Yeah. Um, Was snatched. Absolutely. At birth because, you know, uh, Brenner knew mom's got some power. Oh, yeah. So now who is truly Papa's father. Yeah. Is it Brenner? I mean, is he actually Papa? Or is that just the... Or maybe he got together two people that had powers and said, let's breed them. Right. And maybe Daddy's still out there. That could be another thing that's coming up there. Uh, We already know there's a sister, although not by blood, just someone who's a sister in having powers. Right. And I was really torn because I thought, uh, like, seeing number eight... Right. I was like, that's awesome. I didn't think we needed an entire episode of that. We did. And here's why. Okay. In episode in, in the first season, Elle would make things move and get a nosebleed. Yep. She would do a bit of telekinesis and she would be spent. She wouldn't she would have nothing left. Right. That episode was there to show you one that she has increased her powers more control over her powers and it doesn't knock her the hell out okay um she had the luke skywalker moment you know i can't move it it's i just ah yeah focus and it brings up the rage mm-hmm. the the pain the anger for what happened to her at hawkins lab and that gets her you know, it shows you that her powers have grown she has, is better able to focus them to control them yeah My problem, or my question, I should say, is when she closed the gate, she really pulled on those memories. I mean, she was just like, you know, she was there. Was that cathartic in a way to where she lets that go after? Like, I'm a normal girl now. I can, you know. Or normal as you can be, obviously, you have powers. I think it might almost be the opposite to where... She won't need to work so hard to tap into it now that she's like opened up that that well, she's, connection. Well, she's human, unless, yeah. unless we're told something different. Right. Um, you know, we've all had traumatic things happen to us, the death of a relative or some traumatic event or whatever. Mm-hmm. And can you honestly say it is as brutally real to you now as it was at the time? No. No. The brain heals. It processes. It compartmentalizes. Is that going to be something that is she going to still be able to access that kind of pain and rage when she needs it? Because guess who's waiting for her on the upside down? Oh, yeah. 
it's the Mind Flayer. Yeah, he is not happy. And, and maybe he had more horrible things done to him <laughs> that he's pulling on, mm-hmm. and he ain't let that shit go. Yeah. I mean, she's dancing with... with um, oh, God, what's Finn's character's name? Uh, uh, I'm uh, so bad. Uh, Mike. Oh. Isn't it Mike? No. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's Mike. Uh, uh, yeah. Lu- Lucas um, is the is the kid that we never saw their, their parents. parents. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so terrible with names. What's your name? Um, I forget. Uh, okay, I'm gonna call you Steve. <laughs> Close enough. I'll call you Steve, because uh, you're you know totally awesomely quaffed. Uh, yeah, uh, hairdo there. Um, so is she now much stronger or? weaker in the sense that she no longer has access to that kind of constant rage, pain, and anger over it. Like Just I said, something to think about. Yeah, my I would lean towards she's going to be more powerful because well, because she has to be. Well she has to be, yeah. I mean let's let's face it, in in, in series three season three, if you know the mind flare. If she's got to go toe top to toe with that thing. Thing, it's like oh, I'm sorry. I'm you know I've I've been in therapy and I'm much better yeah. now. And he's like, oh well, well, well I'll go back to the upside down. Nom nom nom. Yeah, exactly. I'm just gonna eat you and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got my... a tornado tentacle here. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> gonna eat you with my little mouth. <laughs> Stop it. Get back in there, little mouth. <laughs> Zoop. Zoop. Uh, um. So that so that's that's why that episode had to happen, and it also lets you know. Other kids that had been in there, you know, she's eleven. What's where's one through ten? Exactly. We got a t- we got a touch of that. Right now, maybe Callie's going to come back in series three. I think she probably will. Yeah, it's for maybe a they'll bit. join forces. Who knows? It's widening the universe a bit. It's and it also it also pulls L out of Hawkins. Very important. She needs to be out of Hawkins for some of these events. She had to go to Dagobah. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. She had to go to Dagobah for a while while other things were happening that she, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, we're in such danger. Quick, L, do your. Oh, she's not here. Right. Ah. And so it raises the stakes for the kids in Hawkins because Elle's not going to go wing and flip the car or whatever. You're on your own. You've right. got to use your own ingenuity. And let's face it. Pretty freaking, inge- you know, ingenious. Yeah, of course. You know, of course. I think I think it worked pretty well. And the biggest reason why that whole episode had to happen. Badass entrance. That's right. <laughs> I knew as soon oh, yeah. as she as she was on that thing, like, all right, she's leaving town. When she's she comes gonna, back, it's not going to be, oh, hey, guys, what's going on? It's going to be at a moment that right is very important. Time. Yeah. Came in, yeah, Demi Dog comes flying through the window, yep. and it's dead. And I went, oh, right, here comes nope, Elle. She's back. <laughs> and then here comes the entrance. Uh, and because they're they're so young, or at least their characters are young, I mean, that would have been perfect for the first kiss. But not in the yeah. sense that... They're not alone, and it's kind of like you know, you know how it is. Yeah. You're like, there's feelings, but we haven't talked about it. We haven't, you know. So we'll save that for the, uh, for the dance, for the dance, for the dance at the end. Yeah. So that was a great entrance, yep. and of course, you know, from there it's like, all right, onto the gate, onto the gate. Yeah. Now let's talk about Will for a second. I was amazed. I was I, through the whole like first couple of episodes, I was like, wow, this kid. First of all, he was amazing, I thought. Absolutely. And you could definitely tell when it's Will and it's not Will. Yeah. You can tell. But my my thought going into the season was I sure as hope I sure as hell hope this kid can act cuz he didn't have to do much in season 1. We didn't see That's him a true. lot. He was he was absent for a good two thirds of the series. And he comes in and he's the central character and Damn, that kid was good. Every yeah. bit as good. At, like you know, for the first season, it was like this Finn Wolfhard kid is amazing, and they were all great. Like right. all four of them were great. And then this kid comes in and blows the doors off everybody. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's no longer the Mike and Dustin show anymore. Exactly. It's now yeah, it's the Will show. When um, you know, let me go, let me go. The way his eyes oh, looked yeah. and the lighting. Whoever, whoever was the DP on that. Hmm? Mm. Yeah. Mwah. Yeah. Absolutely perfect because it it set a it set a tone that was absolutely perfect. You could you could tell when he was regular will and when he, and when he was affected will. Yeah. Now there was disturbed will which which is on its way to affected will, but 
I just I thought it was great. One one quibble I have with the uh, with the reference to uh, to um, the Exorcist. <laughs> Reference to The Exorcist. Oh, come on. The Exorcism itself. Oh, in, yeah. Um, that's a cabin out in the woods, right? Yeah. They're running a lot of fucking space heaters. I honestly was thinking like, oh, my gosh, it's happening. It's happening. Fuse blows. Circuit breaker pops. Oh, no. Get it done. You know, they didn't do that. That's Wood, a wooden I, cabin too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anybody that has run a space heater and turned on a blender on the same circuit, oh, yeah. it will pop. Much less have five or six of yeah. them. Yeah. And then of course and Joyce like cranks it up to like, you know, yeah. to massive gigawatts of power going in there. And I was waiting for that circuit to pop. Now that's just a little real real world thing. I went, wow, do you, do you think Hopper had it wired really, really well? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. That would have been that would have been a good tension moment where they're exactly where they I, were finally getting to it and finally getting to it and then the circuit like, blows. It's like look at his neck. It's coming out like and pop. No, plug it back in, plug it right you in. know. Having to run out. Exactly. One thing that the one thing that bugged me was also they never used the tripwire. Right, they went all that stuff of setting up the tripwire outside the cabin with the bullets. They never tripped it, and you would have thought either one of the dogs or one of the you know the soldiers or somebody would. Well, have the tripped dogs it. or the soldiers never came. But I to mean, the cabin. nobody tripped it off. They I, didn't use that, and they showed it a lot. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a thing, and they never used it for anything. I think it was just um, just to let people know that. He was aware of the danger L was in and had taken precautions. It, it lends it more to his fatherly protector guardian status. Like he's not like, I'll put her in a cabin and come visit her. I'm taking. No, proactive totally. I, steps. I agree with that. But, right. you know, it goes back to Hitchcock, who said, you know, if you put a knife on the table, you better use that knife or you show a knife. Right. And they just they, they showed it enough that I was like, OK, this is going to be a factor somehow in some point, And it never was. I was like, okay. eh. but, all right, you know. All right. Call it, uh, call it a distraction. Yeah. Call it a, a brief red herring, I guess. Um, let's get back to Elle for a second. Yeah. So, um, so how'd you like her uh, Ali Sheedy makeover Breakfast Club? <laughs> she likes that black shit. She did likes that black shit. Yeah. Um, it was good. That kid is great. I mean, I think she's really she's got a future. I know she in the press has said that she wants to play. Uh, princess leia in like a in a prequel movie and i was like that she'd be pretty good if they if they did a mm. you know did a, a rebellion movie or something but mm -hmm. i think she's i think she's really really good um like, this depends on how well she can do a uh, really bad posh british accent well she's british so <laughs> yeah uh, but she has to do a bad posh accent right see the, a lot of things americans don't understand england does not have a accent I mean, it's not even the posh and the lower class accent, for lack of a better term. Right. There's as many dialects just in London. Any. Oh yeah. Every neighborhood has the its difference own. between north and yeah. There are certain people that they hear and go, "Oh, you're from north of the river in in Manchester." Yeah. Yeah. You know, same thing. Like sometimes Cornwall. You go, oh, and... you're from the south, but I. You're Louisiana South. You're not Alabama South. Exactly. That exactly. Kind of it's the thing. same thing. But it, like, like I said, in neighborhoods, like London is a, not a big city, and and you get well, it's big enough. But it's not Alabama, Louisiana. You well, know, no, it's no. Um, the, <laughs> I have a live reading of um of Douglas Adams reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and he said, "Before I begin, I just want you people to know that I only do three voices: <laughs> posh, loud." Posh, quiet, and Australian. <laughs> All right. That's set up front. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, L at the end, closing a gate. Yeah. Floating now. Ex using so much power. Yeah, she, she may go full Neo and full, like, I can do anything. And that might be a good plot point of, I can't control this anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. Or mm. I'm so, you know, she could get total luke skywalker omnipotence out of the whole thing yeah, as long know? as she doesn't go whoa <laughs> as long as she doesn't say that we'll be, we'll be just fine she knows kung fu exactly <laughs> but how how absolutely awesome was it that the shadow monster you could see it through the membrane yeah right there it was trying to get in man oh man and like that gate was pretty big and it's like well shit if that thing gets in 
See, when they at the at the beginning of the series, the season. Sorry, you can call it a series. It's okay. Well, no, because but for listeners, yeah. I, I I eat. You know, we're British fans, so we're fans I, of BBC. I've just trained my brain to call it series, series. one. Series. We're yeah. talking about Stranger Things series two slash season two. Yes. So anyway, um, when they were coming down yep. on the quote unquote mine shaft lowering equipment, the big open elevator. I said to myself, there's a reason why this is so absolutely monstrous down here. Yeah. Something, I don't know if there's like a big demogorgon going to come through or right. an army of something or they're going to drive like a semi of supplies into the ups, you know. Now, getting back to the Thor for a second, I think they should, you know, they don't weaponize this monopolize this uh, uh capitalize on this how so refuge garbage collection and removal. oh start filling the upside down with garbage yeah or all our radioactive waste just and... like you know i'll take it off your hands all right but we're gonna check with our geiger counters to make sure it's not there thing is, is that you start putting nuclear waste in the upside down we know that the membrane's kind of thin in places oh yeah yeah and certain things can kind of bleed through and you can sense it from the other side so i'm thinking you probably don't want to nuke the upside down because it's it's probably going to do something bad to our our side. You know, not to mention piss off the giant spider monster who lives there. That's true. With his little dog and minions. Because you know he's going to he's gonna either get through or they're going to probably battle him in, in the upside down. I don't know how they... They're trying to keep it relatively real, unlike in movies like, you know, or series like uh, Doctor Who. Like, oh, yeah, wasn't there some kind of like, um, I don't know plunger monsters that came through and uh, to try to attack london i don't remember that okay whatever they're keeping it real so if a big multi tentacle you know mind flaying shadow monster pops up at the end of the series once they defeat it and you know they will yeah it's just a matter of how they're going to defeat it people are going to go well that's done do, 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 do. yeah i can't wait to not have to vote for reagan bush again right yeah, you know that's people are going to be I've said this before in like the citizens of London and Doctor Who or any character on a soap opera. If an actual human being went through the things oh, yeah. they did, they would their mind would be flayed. Yes, completely. Just by having witnessed it, like, oh, my dear God, <laughs> they'd be like Joyce Byer on like everybody ten, would be Joyce. Be like, oh, no, 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 you know, yeah. Every time my mouse farted in the next county, <laughs> they'd be hiding under the bed. And rightfully so, because, mm -hmm. you know, that's. That's pretty messed up, but I still say, you know, don't put your nuclear waste. But you know, you can put Throw a couple garbage. Yeah, put a pump, you know, all that plastic we're pulling out of the ocean. Let's dump it, uh, dump it through the gate. We're really good at utilizing things like that for our own, you know, comfort. So yeah, that's not. Oh a bad yeah, idea. that's what that's what humans. Do. That's no, that's what white humans do. True. True. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of indigenous uh, people in the. Well, areas. we're done with this. Let's throw it in the ocean. Yes, exactly. Let's, let's throw trash it in the stream, this. Yeah. Let's uh, you know. Let's let's shoot this elephant. Take a couple of tusks and leave the carcass to rot because we're awful, awful, <laughs> awful people. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> anyway, white males. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I just. Um, uh, um, so yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to see what. Uh, what Elle is capable of, or maybe a trope that would be very interesting. Like, it's gone. I don't, I don't have it anymore. I can't do it. I'm a real girl. But at the end, when the powers are needed, yeah, they'll come back. Boom! You think you know, they have no defense against the shadow monster, or maybe she will have lost her powers, and eight will come back, Callie. Yeah. Or one of the others, or yeah, who knows? I'm I'm excited to meet some of the others because exactly. we also learned that, well they become the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Well, <laughs> no, that, is that no, that's not, not what works? we learned. That's not what we oh, okay. No, we all we learned that they don't all have the same power. Exactly. She had like mental abilities to make you see things, eight right. did, and eleven obviously has you know, I don't. You know, maybe there's a twelve. Maybe there's a fourteen. Maybe there with that that are even more powerful. Cons considering, I think it was probably done chronologically, and since it looks like they stopped with L, I'm willing to bet it's one through eleven. 
Just just putting it out there. There's no reason to go beyond it if you're just going to bring random people. Because remember, Callie, who was eight, is much older. Right. Than, uh, so at least, one or at two. At least by five to seven years. Right. So one or two, they might be, you know. In their 30s in their or 30s. 40s. Or who knows how long this has been going on. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Brenner, you know, probably in his maybe late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. Maybe they'll do a flashback when he was a young kid at Hawkins Lab. I'm going to sweep the floors and I'm going to work here someday as a yes. scientist. I'm going to school. And then now I'm an evil fuck. <laughs> So there's a whole lot that can be done about Hawkins Lab. They've they've sealed that storyline at the end of two, theoretically. Theoretically, yeah. Now, you know, there was a chemical spill that, you know, or something that they killed somebody, so they, they padlocked it up. But who knows? You know, President Bush's poll numbers are are kind of higher now. You know, he, his reputation is being rehabilitated with time. Who knows that if oh, they yeah. advance Stranger Things by one or two years, like, it's a new it's new people at Hawkins. It's Th- that's, okay. That's probably what it'll be. And some it'll be some a, other it, company right. run by Paul Reiser. Right. Or or may, yeah, like, so. Car- Carter Burke will come back and go, I know where there's a weak spot in the membrane between. It's right down there. They're we'll, not going to let that. We'll do it right this time. Yeah. Oh, really? You mean that protective glass that was totally impenetrable that the dogs got through in, like, <laughs> 10 seconds about <laughs> sure i'll get right on that remember yeah. in uh in alien uh was it was it resurrection that piece of crap one of the best little things in there one of them killed their own to get the blood to dissolve the floor and escape because oh, they were in yeah. captivity for a large portion of the you know yeah it's gonna get out yeah. if a monster is introduced in captivity it will get out yeah. there is no doubt about it yeah it has it, to. It, it, well, yeah, exactly. That's the knife on the table that you better start stabbing with. Yep. If you show a monster in a cage, that cage, especially if you're torturing oh, it'll or be experimenting. Em- it'll be empty at some point. Yeah. If you're torturing or experimenting on that monster and it doesn't like it, you know that <laughs> monster's going to get, you know, it. it's chomping time. Yep. Now, we've... Uh, we were talking about the other the other numbered yeah. kids mm-hmm. coming out of Hawkins and stuff like that. Well, we've got uh, we've got a special advanced little uh, little casting tidbit. There is going to be another numbered uh, uh, numbered kid, for lack of a better term, yeah. uh, coming in there. Probably one of the earlier numbers, okay? Because this uh, this person's older. Remember, we were talking about the Goonies. Yeah. Well, this time they're going to bring back medication time. Medication time. Ah, we ran out of time. I will tell you next week. The Nine Million Names of Pod was conceived, written, and performed by Michael Reed and Dan Bowen, with Abdul Benny Hassan as the sound of splintering wood. Research, transportation, and exasperated looks by Courtney Loner. Technical assistance by Cubase, Pro Tools, Skynet, QLab, Deep Thought, Big Brother, and Eddie, our shipboard computer. Financial consideration provided by the Wayne Foundation, Stark Industries, the Brown Brothers, and LexCorp. Legal counsel by the offices of Howard Howard and Fine. Mew Mew, we hardly knew you. <laughs> Our intro music was written by Tim Akers. This podcast was sponsored by Deep Shag Records and is a production of Audio Priming. Throw us a couple stars on iTunes, why don't you? Listen and watch on YouTube, listen on SoundCloud, stream us on Stitcher, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us, comlink at billionpod.com. So this happens again, I'm Dan Bowman. I'm Michael Reed. Hello, Z! Audio Primate.